What's up world, this is Brad from Project Build Stuff and today we're going over everything you need to know to set up and dial in your Wahoota desktop joiner. Let's start by going over everything that comes in the box. First, of course, you have your beautiful benchtop Wahoota joiner. You have the mounting brackets for your fence as well as the aluminum fence itself your dust collection ports, your bag of bolts and tools to get everything assembled, your user's manual, and a couple of push blocks to keep everything safe. The first step is gonna be installing the fence. If at any point during the setup process you get stuck, be sure to reference your Wahoota user manual, which has awesome pictures and directions on this full setup process. Let's get to the fence. On the rear of the joiner, you will find four loosely installed bolts, which will be the mounting hardware for our fence bracket. With all four bolts removed, we will install the fence bracket using the same mounting holes. Next, locate the fence sliding bracket and find the square nuts and accompanying bolts. Loosen these bolts slightly and then slide those square bolts into the C-channel on the back of your aluminum fence. Once your fence is installed on the sliding bracket, be sure that the small semicircle cutout is at the bottom of your fence, which accommodates for the blade. Next, center your fence on your mounting bracket and use the two rear bolts to tighten your fence. The final step of installing our fence is aligning the two mounting brackets together. Align the slots and use the provided locking lever and nut to secure them. Once installed, you can change the height and the depth of your fence using these locking sliding bolts. The final assembly step will be installing the dust collection port. On the left side of the joiner, there's four bolts, which we will remove in order to install the dust collection port. Depending on the size of your dust collection, you have the option of using the four inch standard connector or installing the coupler in order to be used with a two and a half inch dust collection port. Now that our joiner is fully assembled, we're almost ready to join some boards. But first we need to make sure our tables and our fence are dialed in so we can get nice square cuts. Let's start by squaring up our fence first. In order to adjust the squareness of our fence, we're going to be using the provided hex key as well as the two set screws on the back of the fence on the fence bracket. The right set screw will set our 90 degree and the left set screw is to set the 45 degree. Today we're just going to be focusing on the 90 degree set screw in order to make our fence square. The easiest way to check the squareness of your fence is to put a square up against it. You can either look at it from, by eye or a light behind it will help you identify if it is square or not. If there's a lot of light coming through, that means there is a gap. So, I like to push on the bottom left corner of my fence and tighten that set screw. And as I loosen and tighten that set screw, I should either have more or less of a gap. I continue checking it with my light Still have a little space there at the top. Give it a little more. Boom. No light coming through at any of those points. I also like to check it with a piece of paper. I'm good. The last step of our process is probably the most important one, getting our tables dialed in just perfectly. We need to make both of the tables parallel and flat to each other, as well as set them at the perfect height so we can get nice square cuts. Let's check out a little graphic here so you can see exactly what we're aiming for. 
When setting up a joiner, you actually don't want your in-feed and out-feed tables to be even. You always want your out-feed table to be slightly higher than your in-feed table. If they're even, once the rough sawn wood is cut away at the cutter head, there would be a gap here between the out-feed and your freshly planed board. With the table being slightly higher on outfeed, you have nice even support on all that material as it outfeeds from the cutter. Okay, first and most important, before we start messing with the blade, we are gonna double check that our joiner is unplugged. Mine is here. The next thing we're gonna do is remove the guard. There's two screws under the guard here. You will loosen them, and then there's some keyhole slots to remove it off there. With the guard removed, we have great access to the in-feed and the out-feed table at this point. The first step is gonna to be to level the out-feed table, which is your left table here, to the cutter heads. So we're gonna start by lowering the in-feed table all the way down as far as it will go. So you wanna loosen the lock, which is this uh, knob here on the front, and then we're gonna turn this lower knob to lower this in-feed table all the way down as far as it will go. Then we're gonna lock that down with the front knob. So that's down all the way. Now we wanna level this outfeed table with the cutter heads. We want this outfeed table to be exactly even with our cutter heads on the blade. So on each one of the tables, there is four bolt locations as you can see here. I'm gonna start by using my hex to just slightly loosen each one of these bolts. Don't loosen it too much, much or it will just throw your whole table off kilter, but just loosen each one of those bolts slightly. We are then gonna use our straight edge. In my case, I'm gonna use a nice four foot level that I trust, and I'm gonna put that on top of the outfeed table here, putting some pressure over here to make sure it is flat on this table. And then I'm gonna lean in here and I'm going to check to see where my table is in comparison to my cutter head. As you can see here, the most important thing is the position of that cutter head. The tip, the cutting edge of the cutter head is at its highest point, its rotational apex. Then I'm gonna come in with my feeler gauge and check to see if there's any space. Sure enough, there's just a little bit of space between my straight edge and that cutter head, which means my outfeed table needs to be lowered just slightly. In order to raise, lower, and level your tables, you'll use the small provided hex key to adjust two set screws that are inside the small forward and rear holes in each bolt location that we loosened earlier. In order to lower the table, I will turn each one of these set screws counterclockwise in order to lower it. I'm gonna start by turning each one of them one rotation counterclockwise. I'm gonna do that in all four locations since I want the entire bed to lower evenly. If you have access to some feeler gauges, this is great for just checking to make sure you don't have any gaps. I like to check at a couple different places across the face at each cutter head, making sure you leave pressure down as you go. You will also want to check on the cutter head itself to make sure your feeler gauge will not fit through. If you do not have access to some feeler gauges, a nice piece of cardstock will also work as well. It comes in at about the same 10 thousandths of an inch that the feeler gauges I'm using are. And so far, everything on my outfeed table is looking great. Now that I know my outfeed table is perfectly flat, the next step is to level my infeed table to my outfeed table so that they're perfectly parallel and coplanar. So I'm gonna set my straight edge here on top. You can see that there's a small gap because my bed is lowered right now. And I'm gonna use my raising knob to raise it up until the infeed table perfectly touches my straight edge. There we go. As you can see here, my bed is not completely flat. I have a little space down here up 
near the cutting head, I'm all the way against it, but the back is lower. So I need to raise these back two bolts higher in order to get it perfectly flat all the way across the bed. Because I adjusted my tables, I quickly want to double check my fence to make sure it is still square. Mine got a little off. And there we go. One of my favorite features of this joiner is these outriggers that are completely adjustable to the height of the table. So I'm going to quickly show you how to adjust the height of these before we plane anything. You first want to loosen the bolts at the back and at the top of the outrigger. And then these circular adjusters right here are eccentric. So you can turn them in order to raise and lower each side of this outrigger bar. So I'm going to use my level here just like I have the rest of the time and I'm going to turn these outriggers checking across the whole width of the bed until I get good support on my level all the way across. And then I'm just gonna tighten back down all my bolts. And boom, just like that, I got perfect support that I can extend all the way out. With a new machine like this, it's a good idea to give it a quick clean before you joint anything. I'm going to spray it down with a little bit of Simple Green to clean up the cast iron from any oils that might have come from the factory. And the last thing I'm going to do here is use a little bit of paste wax on the tables to make sure they don't rust as well as our wood slides smoothly across it. Just a light layer will do. The final step before we start joining is to get our guard back on and tighten down our two bolts, as well as lowering our infeed table. I like to keep mine at about a sixteenth of an inch per pass. Now that we have everything dialed in perfectly, let's put this beast to the test and join something. And there you have it, our Wahuda joiner is fully set up and ready to mill some perfectly square boards. I can't wait to put this joiner to the test and see exactly what it can handle. And in a few months, I'll be sure to put out a review video giving you my full thoughts on this machine and everything it can do. If you have any questions about this joiner or any of the other joiners in the Wahuda line, be sure to comment down below with any questions you have or hit me up over on Instagram at Project Build Stuff where I'll answer any questions you might have. Hopefully you have as much fun setting up this joiner as I did. And until next time, it's your turn. Go build stuff.